Hello everyone, Deacon John Myers here with another in our series of PowerChurch software tutorials. Today we're going to be going over check writing in PowerChurch, so stay tuned. Before we get into today's tutorial, if you haven't already, please take a second right now and subscribe to this YouTube channel, which you can do by clicking on the icon in the lower corner below. That way you'll know when new videos come out. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And now let's go over today's tutorial on check writing in PowerChurch. Let's talk about how to print a check using PowerChurch using a printer in what we call a computer generated check. Now you think that printing a check is a fairly straightforward process. It turns out that there's actually four steps in the process with the fourth step being print the checks. The first step is to create the person you want to pay the check to. We call that a vendor, so we'll call it creating a vendor record. Next, we'll create an invoice that has the vendor and the amount and the accounts that we want to pay the check to. We'll call that creating an invoice. Next, you select the invoices that you want to print checks for in a check run. So we'll call that selecting the invoices. And finally, you print the checks. Turns out in PowerChurch, you can actually start with a second step, create the invoice, because inside of create invoice, you can go back and create the vendor record. And that's usually the order that we do things. So let's get right into it now, and I'll show you how to do this in PowerChurch. And we'll cover the basics of how to use PowerChurch to create computer-generated checks. In this lesson, we will go over how to set up open invoices and how to set up their associated vendor records and go over the basics of check writing from beginning to end. In order to use PowerChurch to set up a computer check, you first have to go to Accounts Payable Maintain Open Invoices. To add an invoice, click on the Add tab, and today's date will appear, and the Pay Now will be set to Yes by default. The first invoice that we will set up is to pay our gas bill. Since we haven't set up our gas company as a vendor yet, we can do it now by clicking on the green plus sign. Fill in as much information about the vendor as you can. The vendor ID can be up to six characters long and it's a shorthand way of remembering the vendor. There's an area to print out a memo on your checks and check the checkbox. If this was an individual that needed a 1099 form, you could check this box and enter the default expense account. Fill in the reference and the amount, and the default expense account will come in from the vendor record. Finish filling in the description and save the invoice. To add another invoice, click on the Add tab. This time the vendor is an individual who provides a service and needs a 1099 form printed at the end of the year. Add the reference and the amount and the default accounts come in from the vendor record. Notice the 1099 box comes in automatically checked. Our final invoice will be to a bank for our retirement disbursement for January. Notice the disbursement is split between two expense accounts. Changes to any of the open invoices can be made by clicking on the Locate tab and selecting the invoice that needs editing. The checks can be printed on the same day or any day after the invoices are set up by going to Accounts Payable, Print Computer Generated Checks. Any open invoices that had the Pay Now set to Yes will come in selected by default to be included in this check run. If you don't want to print a check for one of these choices, simply uncheck the box. The next screen has today's date as the date for the checks, which can be changed, and enter the first check number. I'm going to back up one screen to show you that these checks will not print out in the order that they were entered, rather alphabetically by vendor name. After printing the checks, but before posting in Accounts Payable, changes can still be made in Accounts Payable Maintain Open Invoices. Notice the check number now appears in the window, and you can view the check. You can edit the check date or the check number, which sometimes comes in handy if you had a printer misfeed, or you can delete the entire invoice 
If you do this, it's not the same as voiding a check. No record will be kept of either the check or the voided check. When you're sure the information is correct, you can post an accounts payable. After posting an accounts payable, the vendor record is updated with history. In accounts payable setup, maintain vendor records, you can see this history. By clicking on the history tab, you will see a record of both the invoice and the check. If you click on the button to change the 1099 status, this invoice will not be included on the year-end 1099 form. Also after posting an accounts payable, the information that's passed to fund accounting can be found in Modify Unposted Transactions. Any of these fields can be edited before posting in fund accounting. However, the record will no longer match the record in accounts payable if changes are made. Notice the journal code AP indicates that this record came from the accounts payable module. The final step is to post the information in fund accounting. This is analogous to making a permanent record in the general ledger.